Welcome to Fading Memories, a supportive podcast for those of us caring for a loved one with memory loss. Hello, Rachel. I'm Jennifer. This is my daughter, Laura. Hello. Hi. So, thank you for being on the podcast with us today. Well, thank you for having me. It's my first podcast, so I'm very nervous. Oh, well, don't be nervous. It's actually a lot of fun. It's Laura's first, too, so it should be interesting. Yeah. So right. why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and you know, your background. Tell us a little bit about grandma and then we can move into how you became her caregiver. Sure. Well, uh, my name is Rachel Hiles. I am 32 years old and I live here in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, I just launched my own graphic and web design uh, business earlier um, in 2018. Um, before that, I worked at a university center for excellence in developmental disabilities where, um, we did research on improving uh, quality of life for individuals with developmental disabilities and their families. Um, so I have a, a big background, um, in the disability field, um, but my, um, you know, my skill set is has been in graphic and web design and um, creating content and just uh, creative stuff. So um, that's you know kind of where my path has taken me. But um, I uh, live by myself, um, and I have two dogs and two cats. And uh, between them and grandma and my work, I um, manage to stay pretty busy. I'm sure. You know, I'll pause right there for one second and because we can see each other but obviously the listeners can't so i'm going to have my daughter laura introduce herself okay a little bit about you um i'm laura graham fink i right now i'm doing court running for a business here in the bay area of california honestly just working through the, f the first stages of being engaged and hopefully soon to get married to my fiance. Uh, we have one pet bunny who thinks she's queen of the house and sometimes she is, sometimes she's not. It depends on the afternoon. Um, I've lived in the Bay Area my whole life and my experience with um, people with dementia and Alzheimer's is really just my grandmother, my mom's mom. And basically seeing how that's progressed from when I was little to, to now, unfortunately. And we all have a creative link to each other. I'm also a professional photographer. And what is it that you have your degree in, honey? Video game design for 3D modeling. So Laura's got a Bachelor of Fine Arts in game design. And Rachel does graphic design. I saw her website. And you do a little photography and video as well. Mm -hmm. So we're all kind of kindred spirits. So now tell me about your grandmother. Well, my grandma, uh, her name is Barbara and uh, she's 82 years old. She uh, was born in this area and grew up here. Um, she's an only child like me. Um, so that means our family and our circle is very small. Um, Laura can relate, her dad and Laura are both also only children. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, so we do have a lot of similarities. Yeah, you know the struggles. So um, she uh, was a teacher for many, many years in this area. Um, when she became a teacher, she realized her passion was uh, literacy. And so um, she got very involved in the um, International Reading Association and their local, um, statewide chapter here. Um, for many years, she did that. She's quite famous still um, for her work um, doing that. And then she also um, ran an adult basic education program for um, adults who had um, intellectual disabilities to practice their reading and writing. Um, she did that the school district and then um, eventually uh, lost the funding for it and kept it going um, even into her retirement um, just on her own um, in partnership with her church um, and she was she's always been also very involved in her church so she's a very accomplished lady 
Um, and, and what is her actual diagnosis? Um, so my grandma has Alzheimer's. Um, I, it's hard to say sometimes because, you know, everybody has their definition of the stages and, and whatever, but um, she's getting to the point where um, sometimes she refers to me as her mother, <laughs> um, you know, and that's uh, kind of funny to me because I've been told her mom was kind of bossy, um, but that's okay. Um, it also makes me feel really good because, you know, you think about your mom, you love your mom, and she makes you feel safe and loved, and so kind of, um, you know, I, I secretly um, enjoy it a little bit when she, when I hear her say that. Um, but she, um, she can still do many, many things for herself, um, but she needs a, a lot of help with uh, making good decisions to stay safe and healthy. Um, and occupied with her time, you know, so she's not vegetating in front of the TV all day. Does she remember who you are sometimes? Oh, yeah. My grandma, she still remembers me. Um, she just, uh, I think, well, she was in the hospital just this last week, and I think what the issue is is sometimes it's hard for her to remember our our connection to each other. And so she's just kind of in her mind trying to reconcile that. But she knows me and who I am. And, um, you know, if I ask her, she'll tell me, yeah, you're my granddaughter. Um, so, um, but how I'm her granddaughter, I don't think she knows that. Um, and she will, um, she has a lot of trouble, you know, keeping straight who she went and did certain things with and um, like all the different places she goes, they're kind of like all gelled together. Um, so that's kind of where she's at. So she's not as far along as my mom. My mom doesn't remember, she knows I'm important. She doesn't, most of the time doesn't remember who I am. Uh, she's also has zero clue as to what day or day of the week, what time of the day, what season. So she's, you know, her sense of time is gone. So um, I'm gonna let Laura jump in here a little bit too. <laughs> you want me to ask these questions then? Yeah. Um, so my mom's got a bunch of notes because obviously I don't know quite as much about what goes on with all of this as she does. Um, and the first one is that one in three millennials finds themselves as caregivers and often unexpectedly. Was it unexpected for you to, to be your grandmother's caregiver? Well, um, that's a great question. Um, honestly, I think since um, I'm an only child, um, the only, her only living family, I think there was always an expectation that I would be responsible for her at some point, but I wouldn't say that we had any conversations in advance of, um, you know, ultimately what, what led to me to be her primary caregiver. Um, it was actually very sudden, although now looking back, I think um, I did have some signs maybe that I ignored out of ignorance or, uh, you know, self-denial, I can't really say, but um, yeah, I, I did suddenly, very suddenly become her caregiver. Um, it just really all helped, happened all at once three years ago. Well, I've t I talked to an RN in one of my upcoming episodes, and she missed the signs with her stepfather. And she worked in a memory care ward. So if, if a trained professional can miss signs, then we don't need to beat ourselves up when we miss them, because... Not really sure. It's very common, is what I'm finding. I suspect it's a little bit like when somebody that you live with loses weight. Mm -hmm. You don't notice it quite as quickly because it comes on so gradually. But if you were to, to pull somebody from another another household that might not see them as often, it would be much clearer, much faster. So mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. that's actually a good, good analogy. Yeah. Um, so does your grandmother live with you? Um, currently, we still have separate residences. Um, I am highly re reliant on technology as it is, but um, I have 
Um, we have Nest cameras in her house um, in every room. Um, that way I'm able to keep an eye on her when I'm not there. Um, and normally um, I check in on them, but I try to observe her privacy um, and not, you know, spy on her all day. But um, that alone, I think at this point is um, one of the key things that allows me to um, still have my own house and space for sure. Yeah, that's, that's super important. Is that, I, that's, I, well, <laughs> easy for me to say, obviously that was, that's one thing that I, I think people don't realize is that as they degrade, which is not really the nicest term, they, it just, it requires more and more and more and more of your time. And, you know, for people like you and my daughter, I'm, I'm only 52. I just turned 52 less than two months ago. You know, we still have full productive lives to lead and, my mom lives in a memory care residence, which has been great for her because it's, she allows her to be social. And, you know, my sister and I are not responsible for her 24 seven. My sister's got kids. Uh, my niece is 13, Laura's 27. So there's a big age gap between the grandkids. My kids. My, my ne nephew is nine. Oh, so I lose. <laughs> it happens. Um, you know, it's, it's hard. My sister's four and a half years younger than me. So it's like, you know, we weren't quite ready to be 24 seven caregivers. And when my dad passed away almost two years ago, that's, that's where she was at. We realized that she was using her like muscle memory to exist in the house that they'd had for almost 47 years. You know, like mm -hmm. I'm sure when you get up, if you know, regardless, we're tea drinkers, regardless of if you're coffee or tea, whatever caffeine you need. Looks like she's a tea drinker. Yeah. Oh, tea. Yay. See, all kinds of, all kinds of similarities. Yeah. I'm like, I got that one a few minutes ago. <laughs> um, you know, you go in the kitchen, you turn on the pot, whatever, you know, you don't, you don't think about, I got to do this and that. And the next thing you just do it. And I, we really feel like that's what she was doing was just, you know, it's, I mean, the longer you're in a place, the more you can do stuff with your eyes closed. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so the next question over here. Is that really posed as questions? Well, what's the next talking um, point? <laughs> so I've been told that you're part of the SCAN Foundation, um, which I just learned about today. So I'm assuming other people will, will be unexperienced with it as a foundation. Why don't you tell us a little about what, what the SCAN Foundation is? Well, um, the... Scan Foundation um, is partnering with uh, millennial caregivers to um, create awareness around um, millennials um, like myself who are caregiving um, and hopefully, um, you know, generate some conversations about that um, so that we can improve um, policies and supports around caregiving um, and hopefully end up with an outcome that uh, younger folks are more prepared um, and not reacting um, and making decisions out of crisis that they're, they're not ready for. Yeah, you, you hear a lot of horror stories from essentially both sides of elders that aren't being cared for properly and then the, the caregivers that are everything they do is is for the care situation where they don't they don't have opportunities for their own lives so that definitely sounds like a good progressive movement for for this situation it seems like with most people when they are when they realize that they've got a cognitive impairment whether it's dementia or alzheimer's or whatever um, denial seems to be huge that's a common theme in a lot of the people that I talk to. So making decisions in crises seems to be a common problem regardless of which generation you're in. Um, and I think it's harder for the baby boomers because they have a different mindset. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm trying, toying with, trying to figure out how to word, you know, you have wedding vows that say, till better or worse, till death do you part. Well, unfortunately, with dementias and Alzheimer's, death do you part is not necessarily physically dying because, you know, 
my dad took care of my mom. I don't think my sister and I were aware of how bad she was. Like I mentioned, we think she was using muscle memory and I know mm -hmm. it affected him and I'm sure that it, it shortened his lifespan. He had a lot of chronic health issues, but he was also really bad at asking for help. Yeah. So. Which is I very, mean, very typical. Oh, yeah. I'm hoping with technology and knowledge that you're hopefully my generation, cause I'm not, I'm not a baby boomer. Um, but you guys for sure would have less denial and less crises. Do you mean mm -hmm. denial like on the part of the sufferer or denial on the part of the family? Kind of both. Okay. I mean, don't you feel like grandma and grandpa didn't talk to us about it, didn't acknowledge it? Yeah, I mean, for a long time, grandma's, grandma's MO was, I don't, I don't have dementia, I just have daffy moments. Right. Um, which... Well, it's a long tough long subject, um, you know, and many people feel uncomfortable with the thought of needing somebody else to get through their day. So um, it doesn't, it's, it is, it's, it is a subject that's hard to breach, but very important nonetheless. Yeah. I have an upcoming interview with a gal that is living with dementia and she is all over Twitter like every day. And she is, she's experienced some serious negative comments and attitudes like well you have a dementia or you don't seem like anything's wrong with you is one comment that she gets frequently or oh you have dementia so they just sort of expect her to just go sit in a rocking chair until she dies i mean it's like um there's a lot in between those two attitudes and she is a pretty big advocate for there is life after a dementia or alzheimer's diagnosis and I'm, I want to talk to more people like her because what I've learned doing this podcast is how much you can, you know, there's, my mom's had it for probably 18 years. And so there was many, many years where most people didn't really know and many years where you knew, but with more acceptance, I think she probably would have been happier and there's nothing wrong with that. So unfortunately the... <clears throat> Well, it doesn't seem like anything's wrong with you. That's not an uncommon thing for hidden illnesses. Yeah. Because I've gotten that with Crohn's a couple times where it's like, well, you don't seem like there's anything wrong with you. Yeah. It's like, if you can't see it, yeah. you know, it's the people. But it's interesting that I've never experienced any of those kind of statements with my mom. Um, I can't ask her at this point if she had anybody talk to her like that outside of my presence. I don't think so. And she would have probably taken them down verbally because she wasn't going to put up with that nonsense. It's just very interesting. But I think not, not denying that you have a problem is important. So then circling back around to the Scan Foundation, there's a, a specific movement called uh, Do You Give a Care, um, which is working with the millennials. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Um, yeah, so um, I had the really cool privilege of having um, the Scan Foundation and their crew come out here and um, capture my story. Um, they um, met with three different uh, millennial caregivers um, of different backgrounds um, and talked to us about our experience with caregiving. Um, and ever since, um, have been, you know, working on spreading awareness about uh, millennial caregivers. Um, Where do they, do that, I'm assuming 99% of that's online, where they spread the awareness? Um, yeah, so um, obviously since they're working on um, reaching millennials, um, it is an online movement. They have their website, which is yougivecare.org. And obviously, um, they're on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram at, at You Give Care. Um, and basically, just, you know, really working on uh, positive messaging around caregiving and uh, millennials and encouraging people to be prepared and um, sharing stories so that people don't feel so alone and isolated in their caregiving experience. That's um, kind of what it's all about. I read on your website, Taking Care of Grandma, you mm -hmm. and somebody else had a pretty creative 
solution to some respite care, which is extremely important. You want to share that story about the, the respite care that I read online? Uh, for sure. So, um, you know, uh, one thing I, I learned in my past life um, at the IHD was that, um, you know, we often think of respite as a, you know, formal program that's offered at a place, um, you know, that a specific time or um, during specific hours, but really when you get down to the bottom of it, respite is about creating um, space and opportunities for you to um, get a break from caregiving. So my example um, was trading places. You know, you think of um, the parent swap or whatever. Um, I uh, am very good friends with one of my uh, grandma's sidekicks. Um, those are her caregivers. I call them our sidekicks. Um, it's a little bit more empowering. Um, anyway, one of uh, her sidekicks has a daughter who's uh, fairly close to me in age, and um, she has uh, some disabilities, and so um, it's a little bit tougher for her to make friends, but we've known each other forever. Um, well, it just so happens that there's an event that my grandma likes to go to um, that happens um, once a month, and I personally really don't care for it because um, it's geared for older people. Um, and so I was talking with her sidekick, Karen, about this event and she's like, well, you know, I actually have something, you know, I think you could hang out with my daughter um, and I'll take your grandma to the thing she wants to go to. Um, that way, you know, we both um, get to do something that we enjoy a little bit more than what we would have been stuck with. Um, so, um, you know, we swapped our carries for the evening, I guess you, you could say. And that was, that was enjoyable and you got enough respite from caring in that situation? Um, I think it was, uh, I, I think that it was a great alternative to um suffering through the event and being the only young person in the room which is what would have happened had i uh, not switched places with karen <laughs> i can relate to a little bit my support group i'm the generally the youngest person that's helping take care of a family member unless a grandchild shows up which is pretty rare mm -hmm. so i'm usually I'm usually the youngest caregiver with the youngest person with Alzheimer's who's also had it the longest. So I get like the home run on the, on that. You should come with me sometime. It's pretty fun. Not the one downtown. downtown. Okay. You have a month to think about it. Our group was last night, but I missed it because I got a little bit of a cold. So I figured I should stay home. Did we get all the talking points or? I've been through most of those. So where are your parents in this um, whole scenario? My, so my grandma is my father's mom um, and he is estranged from our family um, because he has a history of drug use um, and some uh, violent and abusive behaviors that I just won't tolerate. Um, Good for you. Cool. It's just me and my grandma. My, uh, my mom is here in Kansas City and um, she supports me um, as she can, um, you know, but um, all of us have to work and um, have our things that we have to do. So um, just kind of mainly me and my grandma. Um, I, you know, I do have other supports, um, like I mentioned, I use a lot of technology, um, you know, to help her, but also to keep myself organized. Um, and then, um, you know, we leverage her personal assets. We are very fortunate in that, you know, she is, like you said earlier, from a different generation with different values. She worked very hard. She saved all her life. Um, and now, you know, we're able to keep her fairly comfortable because of that. Have you know caregivers that come in every day, um, but we do also you know really rely on um, re resources in the community. Um, like 
we go to the senior center um, for social functions. I help her touch with her uh, professional associations and her um, high school uh, class reunion. They still get together. Um, and then I have, you know, some help since our, our family circle is so small um, and most of the responsibilities fall on me, you know, I have some other help, like, especially with her health care, that's a big thing. Um, you know, we have palliative care um, that we use um, to kind of help her um, stay comfortable and healthy, keep an eye on her. Um, at first, um, you know, I, I really took advantage of like having home health after, you know, she was in the hospital to um, look for ways I could ha have her be safer at home and prevent falls. Um, you know, through like a walkthrough with an occupational therapist. Um, so we, you know, we do use a lot of different resources, even um, with her colostomy. She has a colostomy and um, the place where I get her supplies here in town, they've been a huge help to me um, answering questions about her ostomy and even just listening to some of the crazy stuff I go through. Um, but um I have a lot of support, I think, from um, like online communities that makes up for, um, you know, the, the gaps and actual personal close relationships that we have. That makes sense. Um, go ahead. Uh, so would you say that trying to find communities like that or, or reaching out to other people might be something other uh, caregivers here in my age, millennials, I guess, would uh, want to take advantage of? For sure. I think that you know, um, when you are a caregiver at first, um, you may not even realize it for one. Um, and for two, um, it's just very isolating. Um, and you start to kind of think that you are alone. And so it is really good to um, discover people who have similarities, um, you know, and share um, similar journeys. Um, and that really was something life-changing for me. If it hadn't been for um, starting my blog, uh, I wouldn't have found um, caregiving.com and that's where I've made a bunch of my friends and um, new colleagues and contacts and um, had venting sessions that were great and gotten a lot of advice and um, learned a lot of stuff about caregiving and that's really helped me um, not only as a caregiver, but also um, like a professional, um, you know, using my expertise as a caregiver to, um, you know, um, turn that into like, you know, a business for myself that's really been great. And your, your blog is the, the Caring, Caring for Grandma one? Uh, yeah, my blog is at takingcareofgrandma.com. Um, I started it too years ago in May, um, and it was really just a, an attempt for me to um, get the word out originally about um, caregiving and young people and trying to, because I couldn't find anybody. I couldn't find anybody like me who was taking care of their grandma, um, you know, who was young and, um, you know, wasn't sandwiched, you know, there's a lot of talk out there about sandwich um, caregivers, but there really wasn't a lot um, being said about people who are younger like us um, taking care of our family members. And so I started my blog and thanks to that blog, I found a ton of other resources, like, you know, like I said, and um, it's really just changed, uh, changed my life. It really has. So a little bit cold action and a little bit venting, it sounds like. Um, I, uh, on my blog, try not to vent um, or, you know, say anything too really negative because I like to stay positive um, just generally in life. But I think it's really important because caregiving gets a bad rep sometimes um, to stay positive. But I guess I would say my blog has been, you know, a platform for me just to kind of tell our story, um, you know, and share snippets of experiences that we've had so that people can learn from us and also 
um, you know, the practical strategies and information that I picked up um, along the way, really. That makes sense. And do you use any apps or what? You said you use a lot of technology. And I've learned um, about a couple of apps. One's not, it's only in beta testing. And the other one, unfortunately, I can't remember the name, but I might be able to pull it up here on the computer for you because it sounds like one that you might be able to use. But what kind of other technology besides Nest cameras are you using? Um, we have um, have just recently implemented Google Home um, with the speakers. Um, so we've been working on that. We've been trying to um, get the light bulbs to come on and off when we say so. Um, and um, we have some more simple uh, technology that's not really considered technology, but I still like to talk about it because it's so important. But she has, you know, like a lift recliner, for example, that was life changing. Um, that eliminated, eliminated a ton of fall risks. Um, we have a bed rail that helps her get in and out of bed. Those are simple technologies. And um, I think those are sometimes just as important um, as, you know, all the super fancy high tech technology that we, we all use today. But um, we, I use some uh, medicine reminders with okay. grandma. Um, those are starting to not really be very helpful for her. Um, we also, you know, use music apps to listen to music. Um, and uh, we, she doesn't use the app, but um, the caregiving team uses Caring, Vill uh, Caring Village, which is an app where you can um, type you know, progress notes and uh, keep a community calendar and a communal to-do list and, um, you know, have different levels of security um, or access privileges, I guess, um, for different types of relationships. And I'll say, you know, at first, for a while, it was only me using it um, to take notes on her day. But as I you know, hired helpers, um, sidekicks, if you will. Um, you know, they began using it as well, and it, it's really be become a, a robust um, support for us in terms of keeping track of what's going on in her life. So it's been a, a really great app that we've used. Well, this one that I am just started talking to the company about is called I'm Up, and it's it might be a little bit, um, your grandmother might be too far along for this one. It's it's kind of a check-in app, and I haven't played with it too much because I've been busy this week, and I just started talking to him two days ago, so <laughs> I haven't had a lot of free time, but it might be one that you want to check into because it looked really pretty cool, and I'm going to be talking to them in the next week or so, so that will be, that will be fun because the founders... Um, founder went through Alzheimer's with his wife and came up with this app. So I think that's pretty cool because I've met a lot of people who've gotten into this situation that we're all in and found a creative or, you know, business outlet as, you know, I, maybe part of the coping process might be good terminology. So did you have any questions for Laura? Um, or my mom? <laughs> um well um so i'm i'm like assuming that you're helping your mom take care of your grandma uh when i can because she's at the the memory care clinic it's more of a residence is it a residence yes. sorry clinic, clinic is like a doctor's no, office you're right i'm sorry <laughs> it's okay um the memory care residence there's not as much hands-on as other caregivers might have to go through um but largely right now the way that i i'm i feel like i'm helping is basically being that person that's like you're not alone i i am here with you even if i i can't help as much because i have a full-time job and i've only just recently gotten out on my own um it's been almost two years <laughs> only two years in february yeah not that far off it's still not that long <sighs> anyway what would you what would you say you've learned about caregiving from watching your mom with your with your grandma? 
um, honestly, how, how draining it can really be. Like you, you hear it and you, you hear stories and it's another thing entirely to see it. Just how much even, even someone who's not doing the full-time care has to go through to, to make sure that this person's quality of life is as good as you can make it. Because it's, I know the hardest thing for me is it's like, it's almost like with where my grandmother is, it's almost like she's not really there anymore because she remembers me as I was when I was in high school. Now I'm 27. That was a long time ago now. 10 years this June. I know. It's a <laughs> long time. So she doesn't know really anything about my fiance. She doesn't know that I, I finally moved out and have a pet bunny and like all the things that I've gone through. She doesn't remember me graduating college. So essentially the person that I am doesn't exist at all to her. So that that I already knew was a hard part, but seeing how that affects my grandmother as well, because she gets kind of angry, because I'm assuming she's getting panicky at not remembering these things, and that's just, it gets harder and harder to watch, so the thing that I've learned that I would want to share with other people is you really need to give the person that's doing the caring the support, because of how hard it really is to always be that positive figure because you can't get mad at this person. It's not really their fault. They don't, they don't understand. Mm -hmm. So when, when they make snappish comments about, you know, a, a loved one who's recently passed away, you can't yeah. be mad even though you really want to be mad. And my mom doesn't remember that my dad passed away, which will be two years on March 2nd. So we're coming up pretty quick and she'll, she gets very frustrated that he doesn't drive her places anymore. And she feels that he is dumping that responsibility on me and he's being unreasonable. And obviously if I said, the reason he doesn't drive you anymore is because he's dead, that wouldn't be very nice. It'll just upset her. Yeah. then that, you know, that would be all bad. And so I don't want that. And, you know, so I always have to come up with creative reasons why he doesn't drive her and lately she's been a lot more challenging about that so when i went two weeks ago was um, new year's eve and i said oh hi mom i'm here dad asked me to come pick you up for your nail appointment you know so you can get all get your nails all done for the new year's eve party tonight the only thing factual about that statement was i was taking her to get her nails done and she was fine with that until we got in the car and then she starts basically not bad mouthing him, but her frustration at his lack of dealing with the responsibility was was acute, and it was frustrating because I go through that every single time I see her. You know, why is my husband not taking me? It's, uh, it's very trying, very draining, especially when you you have to mourn this person, and you're you're kind of trying to creatively come up with ways where it's like they're not actually dead. Like, did, no, he's just um, at a meeting. Which gets really challenging, you know, why wasn't he here on Thanksgiving? Oh, he didn't feel good, so he decided not to come. Okay. Then she gets upset because he doesn't take very good care of himself. It's just like, oh my goodness. But it's it's interesting. It's a challenge. And, and it's essentially stuff like that that I try to help with because I understand, because I know I know what happened with my grandfather before he passed, and I know my grandmother, whereas a support group can help, but they might not as acutely know what's going on anything else you'll uh get any more involved in caregiving as you as time goes on like maybe use your personal experience to um go down a professional path in caregiving um probably or not professional i mean if if my grandmother continues to I don't want to say worsen, except that's decline really, is generally yeah. the term. Yeah, decline. Then I would be more invested in in helping her. And obviously, if God forbid something happens to my parents, I'll be taking care of them. But I'm not certain that I have the patience personally to do it for uh, people that I'm not intimately connected to, like family members. Which I know sounds <laughs> sounds kind of horrible, but it's. I don't know if I'd want to do it professionally. Hmm. Um, there are, there yeah. are uh, many different ways to use your personal experience um, with caregiving besides just, you know, directly providing care. So you might be able to come up with an app. 
You yeah, you have a really great insight and background and expertise and gifts that you can share. Awesome. Definitely something to consider. It's definitely planting a seed. She's planting the seed. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, that's definitely something to consider. And, and yeah, there's, there's a level of um, maybe not understanding what you have to offer when, when it seems like a mountain, what really do you have to offer? Well, even a few steps is more steps that somebody else doesn't have to take. So something to consider for the long term. So you liked the caring.com website for like an it's, online type of support? Um, caregiving.com. Um, it was launched in the 1990s. So it's been around for a long time. Um, I feel like, um, you know, there are so many people on there that um, past and present caregivers that are just there to encourage each other and share with each other and um, Denise, the leader, is, you know, dedicated to um, helping family caregivers of all backgrounds get what they need. Um, so. I'll make sure that their link is on. Com. I highly recommend it for anybody um, who has once care been a caregiver, um, is a caregiver, thinks at one point they might be a caregiver, which is everybody, unless you're just living under a rock, as my friend <laughs> like to say. That is true. I'll make sure that their website is linked on my resources page, because I think I've looked at them, but I'm going to definitely look at it some more. And you've got a furry friend sneaking in there. <laughs> Do you have anything else you want to say about the SCAN Foundation or the Give a Care before we sign yeah. off? I think that, um, you know, it's really great that um, the SCAN Foundation is, you know, investing this time and energy into um, helping people discover that, um, you know, caregiving is either in their future or if they are caregiving that, you know, they're, they're not alone. Um, there are resources and supports out there for you. And um, you know, you can share your story and hopefully encourage others. Um, it's, you know, if we all um, share our voice, then, um, you know, we can have a really powerful presence, you know. I agree. I definitely agree because I have met so many people through the podcast and learned so much that I don't know. I know it helps my mom, what I've done and learned, and that's why I try to share it with more people. So I totally agree with you on that one. And so the caregivers for your grandmother, are they there just during the day? Um, yes, right now um, we have, uh, I recently, um, like literally just this week, increased the amount of time they're spending with her, but, um, you know, on a, day, a regular day, um, during the week, she has about, um, close to, you know, nine hours of support that I spread out throughout the day. So, um, but she's currently able to still be by herself at night, but I still, like I said, keep an eye on her, um, brother. Um, so, um, on the weekends, uh, I mainly am the one who's there, um, and then I work, you know, every other day. So um, I am able to get breaks, but yeah, we have um, a few different ladies um, that are all really great in there um, and they, you know, help her out and take her um, to the places she wants to go and um, help her, you know, stay safe and make smart decisions. And um, I really, truly, um, you know, credit them and, and uh, the technology and, you know, my own personal network of friends and supporters that um, allow us to, you know, keep living both each of us keep living, um, you know, our good lives. So. Why well, I, I applaud you for coming up with a really great solution so far. I mean, I know as she declines, as her memory gets worse, you'll have to change that. But, you know, what you're doing now is really awesome. And 
it helps. She's got her independence still. You've got yours. And I think that's important as long as it's, as long as it's, she's safe. And it sounds like you're doing a really great job with that. So I applaud thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. I thank you for um, inviting me to come on your podcast too. I think it's really awesome. Oh, they're fun, aren't they? <laughs> Just kind of sit and chat and it's and and learn it's I, when i first started i was nervous and now it's just like so much fun so but i thank you and i hope hopefully i can work with the scan foundation some more because i really i really like what you're doing and what they're doing so i'm going to be looking into that definitely more after this conversation that we've had awesome